Week one of the NFL preseason has just wrapped up. And with that, we have seen every single rookie quarterback finally make their long awaited debut. Guys like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, guys who were drafted to be the face of their franchise from the get go, have finally given us the first glimpse into what they're going to be like as an NFL quarterback. So now we have seen every rookie quarterback's debut. It's time to go through every single one and give it a grade. Starting at the top of the draft board, going all the way down to the final quarterback selected. Let's get into it. Caleb Williams finished his NFL debut throwing four for seven throwing for 95 yards and running for 13 yards on the ground in only two drives. But a lot of the stuff that Caleb Williams did really well in his debut aren't things that are going to show up on a stat sheet. His first NFL completion, he was already behind the chains because of a holding call, and it's third and 12. He drops back his first read isn't there, and you can see him go read by read until he finds DJ Moore, and he rifles in a very good ball to extend the drive. Next play, the pocket starts to collapse around him, and you see him kind of do a Mahomes-like shovel pass to DeAndre Swift, who ends up getting out for 42 more yards. Once they got into the red zone, the Bears stalled out, so they had to kick a field goal, which which then brings us into Caleb Williams' second drive. And in the second drive was Caleb Williams' play of the game. He started out under center, and then we really got a good look at his first play action pass. And you can see him on the run, he pump fakes, the defender doesn't bite, but he still rifles one into Cole Komet to keep the drive alive. Play action on the run, going to his right, he fired a ball into Cole Komet to pick up 26 yards. And this is the kind of throw that you see a lot of really good quarterbacks in the NFL make. It looked a lot like Aaron Rodgers. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, a lot of the top tier quarterbacks in the NFL who are really good at throwing on the run. But once again, they got into the red zone and they couldn't punch the ball in. All in all, Caleb Williams only played two drives. We got a really small sample size, but what we saw of him, we saw him be patient, we saw him improvise, and we saw him make a pretty good throw on the run. I know obviously it's the preseason, we're not gonna get all the throws and stuff like that, but from what I saw of him, if I was a Bears fan, I would be very optimistic about his future. But because he stalled out in two red zone drives, I'm gonna give him an A- minus for his opening performance. We now move on to the second overall pick of the 2024 draft, Jaden Daniels. Now, Jaden Daniels had the smallest sample size out of any of the rookie quarterbacks with only one drive and he only threw three times. His final stats, he went two for three, 45 yards and a rushing touchdown. We open up to third and six, empty backfield. They need to get a first down to keep this drive alive. Jaden Daniels takes a snap, drops back and fires in an absolute beauty to De'Ami Brown at the sideline to convert on the third down for 42 yards. Out of all the rookie quarterbacks, this was probably the best throw that has been made in the preseason. Granted, it's week one, but this was an elite throw. By all regards, this was a very good throw. Then they get into the red zone. It's third and three, they're in the pistol, and Jaden Daniels needs to make something work. They need to punch it in for a touchdown. And that's exactly what he does. He runs the read option, takes it, runs around the outside, and has a little jog into the end zone. Obviously, Jaden Daniels was the top dual threat quarterback in this entire draft class. There's a reason that he went second overall, because he's a franchise changer. And today he showed that. He only had one incompletion. He had a great throw. He got out of multiple third downs. And when it came time to punch the ball in, that's exactly what he did. Because of that, Jaden Daniels' first ever preseason action gets an A-plus from me. Moving on to the third overall pick of the draft, Drake May. Now, out of all the quarterbacks in the draft, Drake May was the one labeled as the biggest project, meaning that he wasn't necessarily going to be NFL ready, but he showed flashes in college as to what he could possibly be like. A lot of people were comparing him to Josh Allen. In his debut, Drake May went two for three with 19 yards and... That was pretty much it. He also, like Jaden Daniels, had a very small sample size. And I'm gonna be honest, Drake May looked good, but he didn't necessarily look like a third overall pick. The majority of why I think that is because his two completions were both two screen passes. And while obviously you can only throw what the coordinator calls for you, he didn't really do anything to wow me. But I understand. It's a very, very small sample size. I'm not really gonna judge him off that. Because it was such a small sample size and he didn't really do much, I think it's fair that I give Drake May a C. And that now brings us to the eighth overall pick in the draft, Michael Penix. Now this pick was widely scrutinized because a lot of people thought that you just signed Kirk Cousins, you might as well want to get a play now guy. But the Falcons are taking a page out of the Packers playbook and saying, hey, we'll sit him for a few years and let's see how he does. Michael Penix debut stat line was nine for 16 with 104 yards. And one thing's for certain after we watch this debut, he is not afraid to let something rip down the sideline. He had a pretty good sample size of 16 throws, and honestly, he had a couple throws that he just missed, but then he also had some throws that were really good. It was basically your average rookie performance, first time in the league, all that different kind of stuff. With the highlight of his night being a 41-yard pass to Chris Blair. Now, obviously, a lot of people are gonna jump on Penix because it was such a shocking pick, but honestly, he looked exactly like I thought Michael Penix was gonna look in his first debut, and that is a very decent quarterback. He made almost every single throw that you can make on an NFL field. He did miss a couple throws, but at the end of the day, he didn't make any turnovers. He moved the chains decently well. And for that, I'm going to give Michael Penick's debut a B minus. And now it's time for the 10th overall pick of the draft, J.J. McCarthy. Now, J.J. McCarthy's debut started out very rough with his first ever throw being an interception. 
But after that, the man settled in and started slinging absolute lasers all over the field. He ended his debut going 11 for 17 for 188 yards with two touchdowns and one interception. He also had two carries for 18 rushing yards. Obviously, we know he's dual threat, not as much as Jaden Daniels, but he can still get out and make his legs work when he needs him to. A lot of people coming in after the draft said that McCarthy would be a big project guy. And honestly, what I saw was a lot better than what I was expecting from him. If you just take out the interception, JJ McCarthy played fantastic, even with an interception. If you took that out, he would 100% have the best debut of any rookie quarterback. He looked comfortable in the pocket. He was throwing absolute lasers. He was putting everything on the money. He looked comfortable. He really settled in after the pick, which is something that a lot of rookies sometimes struggle to do. He had a decent second quarter going six of 10, but he also had that pick 77 yards. But when he came out from halftime, you can obviously see the adjustment that he and the coaches made in the locker room. His third quarter performance was five of seven for 111 yards and two passing touchdowns. Straight up, he surprised everybody. He really surprised me. Like I said, he was calm, he was patient, he was putting everything on the money. And his performance was a big reason that the Vikings ended up winning this game by one point. All in all, it was a very impressive debut, but he did throw a pick, and because he threw a pick, I'm going to give JJ McCarthy's performance an A. Now moving on to the 12th overall pick of the draft, Bo Nix. Now, Bo Nix had the most throws out of any quarterback on this list, throwing 21 times. He went 15 for 21 for 125 yards and even contributed 17 yards on the ground. While I know rushing is not a strong suit, being able to do that is a big part of keeping NFL defenses at bay and being able to pick up a couple extra yards that can help you extend a drive. He was calm and confident where he had two 22-yard passes on third downs. He did a really good job at moving the chains. And when he did get into the red zone, he ended up throwing one touchdown pass, but he also stalled out a couple times in the drives. Obviously, for him, it's not like he has the best weapons around him, but he worked really well with what he had. He controlled the offense very well. He controlled the tempo very well. And this is something that a lot of us kind of knew that Bo Nix was going to be able to do. And overall, I would say he had the most solid-looking performance he didn't have a peak that was really good. He didn't have a valley that was really, really bad. He didn't do any really great things, but he also didn't do any really awful things. Because of that, I'm going to give Bo Nix his performance a B. Now moving on to the first quarterback taken in the fifth round, Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler finished his debut going 9 for 17 with 70 yards and a rushing touchdown. But the big capstone of his debut was a two-minute drive in which he got the Saints in the field goal range and they kicked the field goal for the win. Now being honest, he wasn't really throwing the ball all too well. I mean, nine for 17 isn't great, but what he did is he took care of the ball and when it came time to win, he won. Obviously as a fifth round pick, he wasn't looked at to be a starter, but we all know about Spencer Rattler. A couple years ago, he was going to be the number one quarterback taken off the board. He ended up transferring to South Carolina, got his confidence back. Now that he's in the NFL, a lot of people are really wanting to see him take that quarterback one spot for the New Orleans Saints. And all those stats do not matter if you can take your team down in a two minute situation and win the game, which Spencer Rattler did. A big question coming out about Rattler in the draft was, can he lead a team? Because a lot of people had thrown stuff at his character and said that Spencer Rattler is not a good locker room player, he can't lead a team, and he has a lot of empty stats. If you just pull up the box score of Spencer Rattler's game, you'd probably look at it and be like, eh, you know, he's a journeyman backup. But that two minute drive showed a lot about his character, it showed a lot about how the team responded around him, and they ended up winning the game because of him. And because of all that, I'm going to grade Spencer Rattler's debut a B plus. Now moving on to the next quarterback selected in the draft, Joe Milton. Joe Milton went four for six for 54 yards and a touchdown. And honestly, after his performance, a lot of people were wondering why he wasn't getting the nod over Drake May. And honestly, he had a very good performance. A big knock on Joe Milton is that obviously he has one of the strongest arms that the NFL has ever seen, but he can't really control it all that well. In this game, he showed that not only can he control his arm, he uses his legs a lot to extend drives, and that's something that you really like to see as a quarterback. Obviously, a big part of his 54 yards was a 38-yard touchdown pass that he had, and honestly, it was a good throw, but a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL are going to be able to make that throw. I mean, the receiver was wide open, not trying to knock him because obviously it's a great play call and he got the touchdown. Box score stats can be a little deceiving. However, seeing the way that he was running, the way he maneuvered around the pocket, it looked like we are seeing Joe Milton kind of come around the hump of not just being a big arm, but being able to really control drives, methodically march the ball downfield. And obviously, he didn't have any turnovers, so he kept the ball out of harm's way. Now, the next quarterback taken was Jordan Travis. Obviously, I can't grade him because he's still recovering from that broken leg that he sustained at Florida State, and we probably won't see him this year, but next year, we will be able to see him in the draft. I just wanted to give him a shout out because I like Jordan Travis. He's a very good ball player. And that brings us to the next quarterback drafted, Devin Leary. Now, I have been looking up and down for Devin Leary footage, and I couldn't find any, so I'm sorry, but bear with me. 
Devin Leary went six for 10 for 37 yards and a rushing touchdown. But a really good thing about him is he didn't have any turnovers and obviously he got into the red zone and he punched the ball in. I'm not gonna make a big case about something if I wasn't able to find the film and watch him. So I'm just gonna give Devin Leary a C plus. He scored the ball, he didn't turn it over. That's what you want out of a quarterback. Now he obviously wasn't slinging it all over the place and doing crazy things, but he did what you want a quarterback to do. He kept the ball in danger and he punched the ball in for a score. Really can't say much else, so Devin Leary, gets a C plus. Going on to the final quarterback selected in the draft, Michael Pratt out of Tulane. Michael Pratt ended up going five for seven with 46 yards and also no turnovers. He played pretty well, but honestly, he was just kind of the quarterback that goes in and throws a couple passes, hands the ball off a couple times, then kneels the clock out to secure the W. Just like Devin Leary, I've been looking up and down to see Michael Pratt's film and I could not find it at all. And the thing is, is that this was happening during the Team USA gold medal game, so I couldn't really watch it with my own eyes, but he didn't turn the ball over. He didn't score any touchdowns. It's pretty much a mid performance. I'm gonna give Michael Pratt's grade a C minus. Now, obviously, this is only week one of the preseason. I'm not gonna be out here making bold claims, either saying a quarterback's gonna take their team to the Super Bowl or a quarterback will never be successful in the NFL. That's just what it is. It's preseason and the majority of these guys only got two drives. But one thing that I really want to stress is a lot of these guys were taking care of the ball and they weren't turning it over a lot. Sure, JJ McCarthy threw a really bad pick at the start of his debut, but then what did he do after? He settled down, he locked in, and then he went and started tearing up the defense. Another thing, a lot of these guys, especially the quarterbacks drafted in later rounds, they weren't playing against the starting defense. Like I said, it's the preseason. A lot of this is taken with a grain of salt. I just make this video because I like talking about football. I like grading these guys' performance. And a lot of people can't watch the game. So if I can at least provide a little bit of insight to the people watching this, that's all the goal is. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. If you like videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm gonna try to get a lot more of these videos out. With that being said, I really don't have anything else. All that said, I have one more thing for you. God bless. Jesus loves you. Peace.